how we can make like the best healthy youth teams we can. Okay, again, not healthy like physically fit, but just have it be a great experience. Okay, 80% of all kids quit sports by the age of 13. I'm sure we've all heard that number. You know, there's lots of reasons. And in the coach's handbook, and I actually saw an article that listed the top 11 reasons why. Um, and I believe seven out of the 11 had basically, if you could kind of narrow it down, four of them were kind of like, we just moved on to other things. Um, or the other seven referred to basically, they lost fun. They didn't have any more fun. You know, and a lot of times I think fun and rec teams can get a stigma of being like, oh, they're just there to screw around. You know, it's not a true basketball. So we want to try to change that. And really the definition of fun isn't messing around. It's not, you know, rolling on the floor, having a good time, but it's going to be an enjoyment, okay? Think about anything that you do that's fun. If it's going to bad your games, okay? You enjoy it, okay? If it was a miserable experience, you wouldn't go. Right? I mean, even if you had tickets, you wouldn't go or you wouldn't get tickets the next year. So it's fun to go. Okay, think about hobbies. If you like to read, it's fun to read. It's fun to just relax. And if you didn't like reading, it's not fun. So you wouldn't probably read. So we want youth sports to kind of have that with those kids where they enjoy it, that they keep going. Hey, if they quit because they want to do something else, more power to them. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to run them away by it not being an enjoyable experience for us. So when you look at great coaches, I think really they do four things extremely well. They communicate, they encourage, they discipline, and they also show their athletes that they care. So the 10 rules for the healthy youth teams. Number one, mistakes are for learning. And this one isn't necessarily in your packet at all, but I can send it out. But number one, mistakes are for learning, okay? You have to encourage the athletes, okay? If you think about your work, if you get yelled at all the time at work, is it fun? No, okay? If you fail at your work or hobby, if you really like to do something and you weren't good at it, do you think you would stay with that hobby? Probably not, or you would keep working at it to try to make it fun, okay? There was an article a few years ago that I read that really kind of talked about why kids gravitate towards video games nowadays, and really what they related it to was that if you're doing a game and you fail, guess what? You start back at a certain point and you do it again until you succeed. And so it kind of created those for those kids an opportunity to, hey, this didn't work, let's try plan B. Hey, that didn't work, let's try plan C. And it kind of created that stimulus in their head of, you know, it's not just, oh, I failed, I'm, I'm quitting. It's, all right, what can we do next? And they said a lot of times in new sports, it's so adult-oriented that it takes away some of that from the kids. That it's always parents saying, do this, do this, do this, do that. And there's no creativity for the kid, okay? So again, while they're out there, keep in mind, they're gonna make mistakes, okay? You're a teacher as a coach, so make sure from one to 12 or one to eight on your team, you're working with all eight of those kids, okay? The stars to the very bottom. Number two, the second rule for the healthy youth team, smile. And act like you enjoy it, okay? This is gonna show that you care and it's gonna be encouraging, okay? If you think about youth sports, there's a very limited time that these kids are gonna be able to play, okay? If they're in third grade, you've got about nine, 10 years to play organized sports, okay? All the way to their high school. Now, the odds of them playing all the way to the high school, I'm gonna tell you, are very slim. Right now, at the high school level, we only have two seniors as boys. Okay, and I think there's maybe five girls that are seniors. Okay, a year ago there was, or a couple years ago there was one girl that was a senior. Okay, so if you think about it, again, most of them are gonna drop out at somewhere, but we don't want them to drop out here. They drop out when they're freshmen or sophomores, that's a different thing. So, but you wanna make it enjoyable that, they not, that they're not quitting here, okay? Now, part of that is I am a true believer that try to have a conversation with each athlete at least once in the event. And I define an event as a practice or a game. Okay, and it doesn't have to be long, it can just be like, how's it going? You know, what'd you do? You know, what are you gonna eat for dinner tonight? Just something like that. And you'll be shocked at how much those kids respond to just a simple conversation. If you have an assistant coach, if one of you can at least get to a kid every day, you will be shocked at how much more they will respond because there's just that personal interaction. The third rule, forget everything you've learned. 
from watching the pros coaches and the college coaches. Okay? This is going to be a discipline and a communication issue. Okay? I guarantee you if Vince Lombardi would be coaching today, he probably would be on the news and probably would be getting fired. Okay? Because that rah-rah, run through the brick wall, screaming, yelling, swearing, that just doesn't really fly anymore. Okay? Um, I don't think it's anything new, honestly. I mean, what you're seeing today when, when you see issues with teams, I don't think it's like something that's brand new. I just think now players have more of a voice and they're not taking that type of abuse, okay? So again, I think those type of coaches are slowly running out. There's no more Bobby Knights. You don't see much Bobby Knight antics anymore, okay? The other difference is, you know, if you're a pro coach or a college coach, it's your livelihood. You know, you don't win, you get fired. When you get fired, it affects your family, it affects your assistant coaches, it affects their families. So that is a lot of pressure, okay? Now here, the great news is, I could care less, win or loss. And anyone, and any of the other community reps would feel the same way, okay? We're not judging you on your wins and losses. We're gonna judge you on, hey, at the end of the year, how many kids wanna come back up and play basketball? Okay, and so far we've been very good about it. One year I was coaching a team and we would, I would play the kids almost evenly and did that hurt us in the wins and losses? Probably. You know, we won one or two games at the end of the year. But at the end of the season, final game, I can't remember if we won or lost, but almost every kid was crying because they didn't want the season to end. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a more enjoyable end of the year for me as a coach seeing that than it would have been if we had won seven of the eight games and three of the kids were like, or five of the kids were like, thank God that's over for whatever reason. So watching those kids be like, wow, oh, it's, you know, crying literally because it's, it's over was actually somewhat like, I felt pretty proud and happy. Number four, the fourth rule, uh, protect the player's emotional safety. We kind of talked about this. This is going to show discipline and communication. Okay, we have a rule that says you, should, you need to play a minimum of one quarter. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm gonna say after watching for the boys, there's a one or two players out there that probably should just be able to play the minimum because it might be too much to play more than that. But for a lot of the other kids, you know, it's, they should get more than the quarter. The, the minimum is there is, that is an absolute minimum. But I would ask you this, why wouldn't you try to play a kid three minutes every quarter or four minutes every quarter half of every quarter if you could for the first three quarters <clears throat> okay when I've done this before and I'll show you in a second uh, yeah we'll show, I'll show it to you in a second I would actually line up a schedule that says okay here's my five starters and their positions at this minute mark here's who's gonna go in at the second quarter here's who starts here's who's gonna sub in for them and I would do that for the first three quarters <clears throat> unless if it's an injury that's what I'm sticking with. Part of that is to make sure that every kid gets in and gets a chance to play. And then in the fourth quarter, I usually had the same five, or the, you know, a five that was gonna start. And then if you see my sheet, it broke down into two. Is it a close game or is it a blowout? And if it's a blowout, I'm moving some kids around, letting them play different positions. If it's a close game, the last five minutes, guess what? I've got my best five in there. Because now we're gonna try to win the game. So you kind of plug along for the first three quarters and then you kind of see where the game lies and then you go from there. Um, again, it's not about winning. We just talked about it, okay? You're not gonna be judged on wins and losses, okay? There is a Mighty Duck, everyone knows the Mighty Duck movies, right? Okay, there is a quote in there from Hans, who was I think the old guy, <clears throat> the mentor to Gordon Bombay, Emilio Estevez's character, and the quote was, show them how to play, have fun, teach them to fly. That's what they'll remember. Nothing about winning the junior peewees or whatever they were in. It was basically show them how to play, and if they play right, it'll be fun, and then that's really what this is all about. <clears throat> the fifth rule, number five, set effort goals and not outcome goals, okay, for a communication factor. Now, they pulled top athletes a few years ago, and what they realized, even when they were younger, they focused more on the process or the form than the outcome, okay? And the one that is really, I think, easily to relate to is if you play baseball or softball, okay? 
you can have kind of a weird swing because you got fooled and you looped one over the shortstop's head and it's a base hit. All right, hey, you got on base, but you know, God, that really wasn't a great at bat. I got fooled, I got lucky. <clears throat> the next at bat, you do everything exactly right and you line it right back up the middle to the pitcher and they make a fantastic play and you're out. So what's the better at bat? Okay, and they were saying that when you pulled these, pulled these top athletes, their better at bat was the one that they made an out. They didn't get on base, but they knew that, boy, I did everything right, the other person just made a better play. Okay, and they pulled top athletes again, and they said that's what they focused on. So in their mind, they were 0 for 1 on the blue pit, but 1 for 1 on that line drive. Okay, there was a tweet a year or two ago, right before a clinic that we ran, and the tweet said, it's not about trying to develop the best 10 year old. It's about giving the 10 year old the chance to develop into the best 18 year old. Okay, and I can't remember who tweeted it out and I didn't have time to take a look at it. But again, if you kind of think about that, we're not here to develop and to peak them at this age. We want them to grow so they peak when they get older. This was something, it's a season long, fun and fundamental goals. And it basically shows you certain things that um, you know you can look at and they do give like percentages but it's more designed that hey at this stage can they dribble controlled ball guarded fit half the time okay they're not saying every time but they're just saying can they can, can they can dribble half the time while they're doing that if they are it's considered a success if not all right this is what we have to work on but again it's the effort goal. They're working to try to get to that part. Um, so some of the effort goals, again, I think the outcome goal is gonna be, we need to win, we're gonna win, we're gonna win. The effort goal is gonna be, hey, maybe it's getting back on defense, okay? Our goal is that we don't wanna give up any fast break points in this quarter. And I wouldn't even do games, I would break it down into quarters. That way, if you were horrible in the first quarter, you can reiterate and say, guys, guys, our goal in the second quarter is only to give up two fast break points, <laughs> okay? And then, hey, at the end of the half, hey guys, we did awesome. We didn't let them score on any fast break. Great job of getting back. It could be as simple as when you shoot the ball that you're hitting the rim or the net, okay? Again, we're not expecting these kids to be 50% shooters, although when we talk about shooting, you'll see hopefully they will be better. Okay, so keep working with the kids. Keep working with them, keep drilling them. You're gonna have that kid that's not quite getting it and you're gonna keep hounding them about certain things. Maybe it's for shooting and it's getting that follow through in the pitch. Okay, and they're not gonna do it, they're not gonna do it. And finally, they're gonna do it once. And you're gonna feel like a million bucks because they finally had that success. Now, great, you're gonna feel like a million bucks, been there, done that. Just be ready for the next 99 times that they don't. Okay? So keep working on them, keep working, and then hopefully the second time they do it, it's only 80 times that you have to keep reminding them. And it keeps getting lower and lower. 